Welcome to Spin Point, Ancient Maori Practice Transforming Well-Being. I'm very excited about this presentation today because for many of us on the call, we have never even heard of poi, didn't even know it was a possibility to make a difference in the lives of people we love or in our own lives or in the lives of our clients if we are professionals. Uh, my name is Benjamin Surmi. I'm a social gerontologist with Kelsch Communities. Excited to be here with you today. That's my contact information in case you would like to reach out to me after this presentation. Excuse me. I want to say thank you to the Kelsch family, which is sponsoring this program and this very series of educational events. We have Allison Emmett Kelsch, who started the um, it started back in the 1950s. They bought an abandoned nursing home because they wanted to make a difference as a family. And they started in the nursing home business in the 1950s, um, sold everything they had and began this nursing home. In the 1970s, they built one of America's first, if not the first, assisted living community. They wanted to create a better way for seniors to live. They wanted to find a way for seniors not to have to live in nursing homes, but to be able to get the help that they needed in a real home-like environment where they all had their own apartments, their own privacy, their own life. So they created one of America's first assisted living. This is Aaron Kels and his family, and they own and operate all the Kels communities over eight different states, 32 plus different communities, assisted living, memory care, and independent living. Thank you to the Kels family for uh, sponsoring this educational series. Uh, I want to make a quick announcement about an opportunity to win the Caregiver's Care Package. If you are a caregiver of any kind, this care package is for you. It is a great opportunity to take care of yourself. We're going to be giving away some of these care packages this month, as well as the Caregiver Journal, which is a way to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Because it's easy to get focused on the person you're caring for, or all of your clients, or the people at home that you're caring for. But you've got to make sure you're taking care of too because that way you can give lots more to the people that you're with. And that way you can be around to care for them. So this, the self-care journal is really important. So if you wanna enter that drawing to win those two items, go to livingwellevents.org slash insights, a few questions to get your feedback, as well as you can give us your email address so we can, we can enter you in the drawing for that. After today's event, our presenter may have a few things that she would like to send you and your email will also help us give you those resources after this event. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Kate Van Regal West, and she will be presenting today on SpinPoi. She has been doing this for over a decade. She's a scientist, an entrepreneur, an artist, and she is a, uh, a doctor as well of, remind me your, uh, your doctorate. What's the name of your doctorate? It's basically in poi, yeah. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, we're excited to have you, doctor. Take it away. Uh, thank you so much, Benjamin. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Uh, as Benjamin mentioned, my name is Dr. Kate Regal Van West, and I run Spin Poi, which was an organization that works with poi to improve health and well being, especially for our seniors. And before I get into what is poi and how is it good for you and how do you do it and all that stuff, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and kind of how I got to this this place. So this is a picture of, of me a long time ago. I'm presenting right now from New Zealand, but I'm from America. So that's me and that beautiful American flag <laughs> leotard flying through the air. So I was actually launched off of that board there doing, doing flips because I just loved circus arts when I was growing up. I was um, a pretty, athletic kid, but I didn't really like competing. And so I really found my home in circus because it was super fun and there was no winning or losing. And I continued doing circus um, as I was growing up. This was like before people had phones where you could just <laughs> take photos all the time. So I don't have many photos, but here's a few uh, random ones I think probably my mom took, if anybody. Um, yes, yeah, so I continued doing circus and it was in the circus that I saw somebody using these. Uh, and if this looks kind of unimpressive, this, because it is, it's literally just a pair of socks. And I saw somebody there in the circus twirling these socks around in a circle. And curiosity kind of led me to try. And something happened to me when I just felt this thing orbiting around me. It just felt amazing. And I didn't really know why, but I just knew that I 
wanted to keep keep trying it. It just felt good. And I found out that this thing is called POI, P-O-I, and those socks were just one type of POI amongst many types of POI that are actually practiced all over the world. So if you look in the top, top row here, these two are examples of POI from hundreds of years ago. It originated with the Maori people, the indigenous people of New Zealand. Um, and those poi that you see there were made of, of plant materials. And poi continues to play a prominent ro role in Maori culture today. So you see poi in kapahaka, which are the Maori performing arts. That's what you see a picture of there, where a group of people will do a poi routine all synchronized and every movement and action that you see, the poi are really storytellers. So every action has a meaning to it. It's really beautiful to watch. Here's an example of someone working with to um, short poi, and you can see that they are hit, uh, hit on the body and they sort of bounce, bounce back. And there's lots of different types of poi going on all over the world. Poi with tails, there's poi that have rigid balls on the ends, you can roll them off of your body. There's poi that glow, which are really beautiful at night. And of course, the next level to glowing poi is fire poi, which is extra cool. And uh, you may be wondering at this point in the presentation what this has to do with, uh, with older adults, although you would be surprised um, how many older adults ask me if they can try fire poi. It really happens. Um, yes, well, I was also wondering the same thing. Um, I felt the benefits of poi for myself. You know, I just thought it felt really good, and I saw all these people around the world working with all these different kinds of poi, and I thought, I bet this could be used as a therapeutic tool, particularly maybe with our seniors or those who are in the hospital or, or rehabbing from something. And so that's uh, what I've spent the past five years or so doing is bringing poi uh, to our seniors and doing some rigorous research. So I started off by doing a large randomized controlled trial with independently living older adults. These are some of those ladies right there. And after I did that research study, I continued on to do work in different uh, senior living facilities across all levels of care, so independent living, assisted living, even memory care units. And I also did some work with the Auckland City Hospital, mainly people recovering from stroke, but also other neurodegenerative diseases. And what's exciting is during that uh, large clinical trial, the results showed, un unsurprisingly, <laughs> poi is good for your body, um, specifically the results that were significant or that it improved grip strength and balance. So these are two very important things uh, for older adults. Grip strength is important just for everyday functioning and living, you absolutely need it to keep your independence. The grip strength also happens to be a really good indicator of overall health and overall mortality. So having a strong grip strength is really important. And of course, we know balance is extremely important. Falls and fear of falling are um, a major issue for our older adults. So anything that can stabilize those core muscles and work on balance is, is really exciting. Uh, like I said in that trial, I was independently living, so I was having them, you know, cross the midline, uh, shift their shift their weight a lot. So we were kind of challenging challenging balance along the way. But what's even more exciting, and I mean, it's all exciting to me. But what's, I think what's even more exciting is that the the clinical trial showed that poi was actually also good for the brain. So the statistically significant result was attention, specifically sustained attention. So that's our ability to sustain our focus. And you know, we need this again for everyday functioning, for holding a conversation, for driving. And of course, to see this cognitive change is uh, particularly important as we age and we're trying to maintain our physical and cognitive health. So you know, we know that exercise in the body is so important. We're losing muscle mass and flexibility as we age. And we know as little as a half hour a day of exercise can extend our life. And the same goes for the brain. If you don't use it, you lose it. So we need to be exercising our brain, our neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to grow and adapt and change over time. And it's actually a loss of neuroplasticity that results in a lot of the neurodegenerative diseases like we see like dementia and, and Alzheimer's. So it's very important to keep exercising your brain. Um, we used to think that the aging brain wasn't so plastic, but we know that's not true anymore. There was a study done on juggling where they taught older people and younger people how to juggle. And the 
older people really did not learn how to juggle by the end of the study and most of the younger people did. But when they looked at what was going on with the brain and the areas of the brain that were lighting up, they saw that the group of older adults was getting the same benefit just from learning the act of juggling, even if they couldn't master the juggling at the end. So this is very important. We might be slower to learn, but we need to keep trying and keep going through the process of learning because it gives us the same benefit. So the fact that Poi can touch on both of these things is really exciting. Uh, but that's not all. Um, I was also asking people how they felt during my research. I think that's really important. And the, the trend that came out is that people were really enjoying doing Poi and that it was fun. So if we look at some of the, the numbers here, um, this was a few studies that I did uh, across age care facilities with different levels of care. It's 134 people. So I asked them after the lesson, you know, how much did you enjoy doing poi? So 66% said a lot, 34 said somewhat, and nobody said that they didn't enjoy it. And I also asked uh, if you'd like to do it again, just a good way to tell if someone's enjoying something. And 93% said yes, 4% said maybe, 3% said no. Um, I think fun should not be underestimated as an important quality in an intervention. I think it's easy to dismiss like, oh yeah, that's, that's fun, let's play, like that's for kids. We, we know that play has profound benefits across the lifespan. And more importantly, if something is fun, you just want to do it. I, I tuned into another one of these webinars from Dr. Colin of S3 Balance and he was saying, you know, talking about the importance of exercise. And he said, oh, we know that we need to brush our teeth every day because it keeps our teeth healthy. So we know in the same way that we need to do exercise every day, but not everybody does exercise every day. And I think one of the main factors contributing to that is that a lot of exercise isn't fun. And so you're not like super motivated to do it. So the fact that a lot of people enjoy poi, obviously it might not be for everyone, but you know, the vast majority of people like doing it is actually very important. I'll just touch upon a few other things that have sort of come out in the in the research, one is um, people really enjoy the social aspect of poi. This is, of course, especially important for our seniors, combating loneliness as we age, and also continuing to have that social engagement, even with those with cognitive impairment, is so important when you might have to be communicating, you know, in other ways. And group poi classes, I have never seen a group poi class where people weren't smiling and laughing, but you know, we're all in lockdown at the moment, so maybe there's not gonna be as many group poi classes, but what's also really special is how you can work with poi one-on-one -on -one with another person. And after I give this presentation, I'm actually going to show you three poi moves that you can try straight away. And I will uh, touch on how you can really connect with someone while you're doing that. Um, the second is that it's rhythmic. So this is kind of like a bonus thing on top of all the benefits of exercise. We know that things that are rhythmic, like dancing or playing uh, percussion, and specifically things that are listening, that involve listening to music or moving to music, they stimulate the brain, the pleasure centers of the brain, um, in even a different way than just say it's something like walking. So that's really exciting because poi is innately rhythmic, um, and if you're doing it to music, then that's even better. And of course, it's really adaptable. So I'll show you some examples of different poi and. Uh, not only is the poi itself adaptable, but actually the, the movements are so adaptable that it can be, you know, from very, very simple to extremely complex. And the, the last thing that I'll touch on is that it's sensory. This is particularly important for dementia. This is something that Benjamin touched on in his webinar about dementia-friendly activities. So poi actually uh, covers three, three senses. So we've got touch, and the poi can obviously be made of all different materials. Obviously, we've got sight. But what's also exciting is we have sound. So um, if you make a certain type of poi, like these Maori poi that have plastic, they um, make a really nice sound. So we've got those three senses. So that's, that's really exciting. And um, you know, it's no surprise that people around the world are working with poi and seniors. So I'll just show you a few um, pre-COVID-19 <laughs> examples. So this is an aged care facility in the United States and the occupational therapy assistant started a POI program there in the assisted living. This is a young student. She is originally from India, but she's a researcher in California at the moment. And she went back to her hometown and started a POI program just in the park for the, the local seniors uh, every morning. 
And here is an example from New Zealand. This is Hillary. She runs Move Good Now, and she is incorporating poi into her dance classes for the 60 plus. Yeah, that looks like very challenging, actually. <laughs> She's doing a good job. Um, right, so how can you do this? Well, the first thing that you're going to need is some, some poi. Maybe some of you have made them already. Uh, there's a little link in the webinar, but if you haven't, don't worry. Uh, those are these, you know, the beautiful socks that you saw at the beginning of the presentation. It really is that simple. I have a video online that you can watch. It shows three easy ways to make poi from stuff around the house. And all of those poi would be perfectly suitable for older adults. So uh, I'll put the link at the end of this presentation so you can see that. And also just to inspire you a little bit, poi is just an excellent craft activity. So this is something that you can do with, your, with whoever you're working with, loved ones at home, or if you work in aged care. And the, the sky is the limit here. These are some of my favorite examples, but you can get, get creative, use different materials. And even if they, um, the seniors are working with might not be able to do all the parts, but they can definitely help with some of the parts, picking out the colors, braiding the cord, et cetera. And after you have your poi, then you need to know what to do with your poi. So, uh, Learning your poi moves. There's a lot of information out there. If you just Google poi, poi spinning, you'll see all sorts of different tutorials and stuff. I've got tutorials on my website as well. And I put together this little starter package just as um, you know, a little easy place to start so you can get going. It shows you how to make poi. And then there's a video that has 25 moves to get you started. And all those moves are appropriate for older adults. So you can find that on my website, give me a little discount since you all are joining me today. It's only $9 anyway, so very affordable. Um, I've got other resources on my website as well, like some guides and then those tutorials that I was talking about. And these tutorials are great. Benjamin is saying how we need to take care of ourselves too, you know, not just the people we're taking care of. So I've got tutorials that would be, you know, good for someone like me who maybe just wants to use poi to relax. And also um, maybe for those who are have less mobility, and maybe need to stay seated, you could do the standing as well. But for our seniors, some poi routines that you can do together. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on online. Here's all my information. So before I show you some poi moves, yeah, I just wanna say, I think now more than ever, um, it's a challenging time. And so I think it's really, really important to keep our bodies and our minds active, but also just to have fun. <laughs> just to relax a little bit. And poi is quite special like that. When you start twirling that thing around, it really draws you in, it draws your attention in, and you are really free from distractions. You're not worried about what's, what's going on in your life or in the rest of the world. So I think um, it will be a good time just to, just to give it a go. And I'm here to support you. You can always reach out to me or find me online, spin poi across everything. So. If there's any questions, you can feel free to type them in. I'm gonna show some poi moves now, and then um, at the end, maybe I'll look and see if there's any questions that I can answer now. So if you have made some poi, now be the time to get them out. Uh, I'm gonna show you three moves that go from uh, different levels of challenge. The first one is very, very simple. So. Not everyone may be able to actually sustain twirling this thing around at the beginning, right? So the first thing that you can actually try is just a pendulum. It's uh, just the poi swinging back and forth. So this can be as small or as big as you want it. You can, you know, barely be moving this here. You can make it big. If you're standing up, you can even drop your, drop your arm down, let your whole arm relax. It's quite nice. And I spoke earlier about that social connection when playing poi. So a really good way to do that is actually to mirror the person across from you. So if you stand, oh, I don't know if everyone, what everyone's seeing now. Is everybody okay? I put it on just to your video because you were pretty small, so I blew you up so we could see you. That's great. Okay. So one thing that you can do with this pendulum is mirror the person. So if you have your poi right now, this is perfect because you can mirror me. I can like, so if you were across from me, right? You'll be trying to follow my poi. I have done this in a lot of um, assisted living and memory care units. 
and even people that might have lost speech or they have you know cognitive impairment they usually lock right in with me and they they will mirror me so this is a really great way to engage with someone and of course this is just with one poi so there's you know so many options gets infinitely more complicated when you have when you have two poi uh, but there's a lot you can do with that so that's an example of a, a pendulum so next i want to show you a move that's a little bit more complicated uh, it's called a figure eight. So first you have to be able to twirl the poi. I won't get too much into the mechanics here, but what's happening is you're making small circles with your hand and your wrist. If you have limited mobility there, you might be making bigger circles like this, right? More of a big movement there. But really this is all you need to do. And the figure eight is a circle on either side of your body. So if you imagine that you're standing on a train track and you get your poi, twirling over one of those tracks by your side. And what you're trying to do is cross it over to the other track. So my poi happens to be spinning like this way. So when it gets to the top of its orbit, I'm gonna cross it over to my other side. What's happening here is you're making an eight or an infinity sign. You can kind of visualize. If you don't have any poi, you can visualize what's going on here. And you can actually just do the, the path with your hand. So you're going palm up, palm down. And you're making that eight. This can be kind of a, a complicated move for many, many seniors, but if they can visualize it, uh, usually eventually they can do it. And just to give you all something to work on at home after I leave this webinar, you can do that with two hands. So I wouldn't expect you to be able to do that straight away, but um, you can cross both hands at the same time, right? So that's something to work on for later today. <laughs> and the, the last move that I want to show you um, is just a catch, actually. I think I'll, I'll start with these poi. So the easiest way to catch the poi is palm up and catch like on the ball or just before it. So you could do this from that pendulum. You could get it to go all the way around or you could do it from a spin. What I like about the catch is that if someone has very limited mobility on one side, maybe they're recovering from a stroke, is that you can have this hand that's more passive. And if you're working with the, the Maori Poi, um, or something that has this plastic, it makes a really nice sound. And you don't have to be able to catch it, but you can just get the feedback of hitting that hand, right? You can go palm up or palm down. So this is really good for those that maybe only have use of one hand. Um, Catching it, of course, is next level and working on all kinds of coordination. So those are three moves to get you started. There's like a wealth of information out there. So I, I encourage you to make some poi and, and play and have fun and see what you can discover. So I think I'll, uh, I'll end there and then maybe I'll see if I can see if there's any questions. I don't even know where to look. Maybe Benjamin knows. So far, no questions, but if anybody does have a question, you put it in the Q&A or in the chat and uh, or raise your hand and I can unmute you and hear your voice. While we're waiting to see if anybody has got any questions, uh, Dr. Kit, what do you think are um, some of the, res what kind of responses do you get from family members who are watching their loved one all of a sudden do this poi and they had never done it before? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, like the way people light up. I think, I think there's like some expectation at first, like, oh, I don't know if they'll want to do that. Like that doesn't seem like something they might want to try. Um, but then actually, as soon as someone has the poi in their hands, <laughs> like going around, they usually, they just go, right? So it's often like quite surprising that people are quite surprised to see their loved one just like taking off with it, even if they've never done it before, right? That's right. pretty cool. A question um, came in from Wendy Morris. Um, she says that she grew up doing poi with Hawaiian dance, but she struggled with hitting herself in the head. How <laughs> do you avoid hitting yourself in the head? Yeah, okay, that could happen. So, you know, first things first, it's important to have a very soft poi, especially when working with seniors. Um, yeah, no like tennis balls in there, none of that. So I can hit myself in the head all day. I'm totally, totally fine. But if you'd rather not hit yourself in the head, usually what's happening, okay, there's like a whole like philosophy around, you know, like how you do poi, which I talk about in a lot of my resources. But one of the things is the plane. So like, where's the poi in space? 
So usually you're trying to do something like that figure eight, for example, where it needs to be flat by your side, but maybe it's like on the wrong plane. So it happens to be coming in at a weird angle where it really needs to be coming in like right flat by your side. So often you're hitting yourself in the head because you're trying to do a certain movement and your poi has gone off the off the tracks <laughs> and it's no longer on the right plane. So you can just drill that by visualizing, doing one hand at a time, breaking down the move, et cetera. But even with all that, you'll probably still hit yourself in the head, sorry. <laughs> Jennifer from Chandler, Arizona, she asks, if there are any favorite songs that you recommend for going along with Poi. Yeah, I, I have a lot of songs that I, that I love and usually do different ones for different levels of care. Um, on my website, I have four like routines to music. So those songs are really good. The, the beat is kind of important, right? Cause you, if it's too fast, you're like, I mean, if you're not moving to music, that's fine. But if you want to go to the music, you kind of need a good beat. So I like the song Little Bitty Pretty One. It's an old song by um, Thurston Harris. Uh, ABC by the Jackson Five that like has this really good, really good groove. There's also some really beautiful traditional um, Maori songs, some that are even about poi, like E Re Re Taku Poi, that is, that is really nice. So you can, you can message me after I give you more suggestions. How long of a, uh, Lori, uh... Lori asks the question, how long of a session with the POI would you do, especially with people living with dementia? Yeah, I would keep it pretty short, maybe um, like 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on if you, what kind of exercises you're doing. Sustaining this is like hard, right? You can't do that for too long of a time, depending on people's ability levels. But there's a lot of stretching and other things you can do and things like that pendulum that can get you going. So if you're incorporating all of that stuff, if you know, if you're using the poi to do some, some stretching, um, a half hour is good. That's normally what I would do in assisted living. Independently living, I'd normally go 45 minutes and then yeah, dementia, I'd say 15, 20, maybe 30, depending on what kind of other things that you're incorporating in there. But just make sure it's not like too, too long of this because that actually gets tiring. And then Michael um, asks, what is the ball made of that makes the noise? Mm. And can you tell us the types of balls used in the socks? Yes. So I have in this video that I have online, it's like a poi making tutorial and I show you all the materials mm. laid out and all everything like that. But just to answer right now, this is filled with stuffing. Um, so it's like real, real soft. And you could also use, this is like stuffing from the craft store, but you could just use anything like crumpled newspaper, plastic bags, cut open a pillow, I don't know. And inside of the socks, I like to fill them with rice actually, which you can also just fill these with stuffing. But if you want like a little bit of extra weight, you can add rice inside, or you can just roll up another sock and put that inside the sock. And then that will be nice and soft and light. Very soft. Yes. Love that. And I have a comment from Janine. She says, just want to say consumers in aged care homes with dementia have shown me such interest, fun, and ability. That has been very surprising. It's not a question, but it's an observation. So I assume she means that she's been surprised at how much interest she's seen. Yeah, I, I know Janine. She works, she works with Poi. Um, she's actually one of my certified Poi instructors, which anyone can be a certified instructor. If you're interested in that, you can do it online. Um, oh gosh, it's amazing. If you if you do look on Denise's page, Age Care Lifestyle Consulting or the Spin Poi page, you will see her with her seniors just completely engaged, loving it. It's, it's so cool. Thanks, Janine. That's, that's awesome. And Lynn Rockstead from the Portland, Oregon area, she's asking if a wool dryer ball would be a good thing at the end of the sock. I, yes, I don't actually know that I like know what a wool dryer, like I can imagine what it is, but I don't know that I've ever like held one, but I'd probably say yes, anything soft is good. The thing is about the weight. So like you'll want to experiment with this on your own, but like these poi are like very light, right? And these poi are quite heavy and it just feels different. You'll feel it when you're spinning it around. So that's something you kind of want to experiment with for yourself, but just, yeah, soft. That's the main thing. Keep it soft. <laughs> 
goodness, love it. Well, I think that's all the questions we had today. You know, I'm very excited about seeing this in the United States. We don't see it very much in the United States yet. And um, I'm very excited. One of my one of my good friends, Lynn Rockstad, she emailed me about you and what you're doing. And that's what got me interested um, because it's just, in America, we do so many chair exercise routines that are so similar. And, you know, at some point you fall asleep because you've seen <laughs> same chair exercise routine a hundred thousand times. And so spin boy is something different and it does give you a sense of accomplishment. I tried it with my children at home. And at first we were frustrated. We were like, we can't do it. But all of a sudden it came and we were able to do it. And it feels magical. And I can just see seniors who maybe they're living, uh, you know, they're bored at home and they just don't know uh, you know, they're not feeling too like, hey, I can do stuff, right? All of a sudden, they're able to do something that they haven't done before. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think like one one quick thing to end is like the poi is like so active, right? So, you know, a lot of these routines that we're doing, they're, they're passive. You're following along, but it kind of doesn't matter if you're doing it or not, right? When you have this thing in your hand, as someone mentioned about hitting yourself in the head, it kind of matters. You ha You have to be really engaged with it and really active with it. So I think that's something that, that sets it apart and gives you that real feeling of accomplishment, you know? You know, bringing that up, how, what is your recommendation on space around a chair, especially if you have multiple people doing spoy in the, spoy in the same room? Yeah, space can be a, can be a challenge. Um, usually you just want to be able to like put your arm, like I'm not even in a good space because I just hit my wall. You want to be able to put your arms out. I mean, you can put your arms out without hitting somebody and that's fine. But also the, the length of the poi heavily affects that as well. So if you have really long poi, suddenly your poi is tangling with someone else's poi because now you've got your arm plus your poi. So the length of the poi makes a difference. And if you're sitting down, you don't want very long poi anyway. If you're going to be hitting the ground. You usually got arms. You know, I've worked with people in the big reclining chairs and wheelchairs and all kinds of chairs. So usually you've got arms to navigate. So usually shorter poi is better. And, um, you know, that way you don't have to worry or lift your arms so high. So that helps with the space as well. And same if you were standing, I would say like, if you can make a circle around yourself, you'll, you'll probably be okay. If your ploy are soft, <laughs> then even if you hit somebody, you'll be fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, let me um, put back on the screen real quick for everybody the link. If you would like to get um, any of um, her resources, that she might be sending out afterwards or links, please do um, uh, please do go to this website, livingwellevents.org, and you will be able to, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, everybody. You will be able to fill in the information and we'll be able to contact you with that, as well as if you'd like to enter the drawing. So, hey, thank you so much. I, we really appreciate you being here, doctor. And any last words for our, our guests? I just want to say it was super weird to not be able to see anybody. Uh, so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I have no idea how people were reacting. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here, whoever you are, wherever you are. Lots of positive comments in the chat. So thank you. Cool. You all have a great day. Thank Talk you. Bye-bye.